Can you hear me? All right. I don't think I can hear you. Let's see. I'm not on. Yeah. Mute. Now I hear you. Okay, great. But I was pretending I was going to be able to do something about it, but. <laughs> yeah. Uh, who knows? Well, we got a lot more security this time. <laughs> you have an expectation you were away, Rico, right? Pardon me? Were you on vacation? I was in Panama, yes. Ooh, wow. uh, was yeah, it was that? wonderful. Great, fabulous. I have neighbors who live in Amherst six months of the year and in Panama six months a year. Oh. So I went and visited them. Oh, wow. All right. Do you go to yeah, the old great. I did. Yeah, it's nice. So you've been to Panama. I have only once years ago. Uh -huh. It was fun. Yeah, I loved it. Yeah. Great. They took me all over. It was great. Yeah, yeah. it must be great Well, not all over, it. but we saw a lovely beach and yeah. they live near Boqueta, which is a beautiful area. Yeah. And well, spent to some be there time with in. people who know it must be great. Yes, exactly. And who are very well connected in the community they live in. So that was cool too. Cool. That's great. Yeah. Um, so Greg may or may not be coming. He's not feeling well. And mm -hmm. um, I will just full disclosure, I am also not feeling well. Oh. So three days into my COVID quarantine. Just like uh, a oh. little room all by myself. Oh, isn't that fun? <laughs> I know. I've been there. That's hard. So um, I can't really complain. I think my husband has no complaints. Becky, it's very, it, you're very faint. Am I hard to hear? Hmm. Yes. Yeah. And you fade in and out a little bit. But All right, let me see. I, I'm gonna do I don't know if that's because you're sick or just <laughs> your technology. I'm also- I'm Her technology sick. is sick? <laughs> <laughs> right. All tech, my technology is sick too. Usually that means it's awesome though, right? Yeah. All right, I'm going to play around with microphones and just see if everything yeah. changes. Yeah, you is might that better? No, might it's not any different. Hmm. Um, oh, I should probably get those I kids wonder... books up. Hmm. Hmm. I don't really know what to do about it. If I lean in, is it better? Can you? Hear well, me better? I can hear you fine. You can. Yeah, I tried turning up my volume, but I can hear Lucas with no trouble. But huh. Becky's hard for me to hear. All right. Um, well, I'm going to try not to do that much talking, so maybe that'll be okay. <laughs> okay. Oh. Me too. Oh, Greg is here. I see him. Great. So we're all here. It, okay. I mean, I'll promote him to panelist. Yeah. And um, I think we're all set. Great. Sorry, Nate, I, I don't know if you did send out the um, Zoom link earlier. I just couldn't find it. Mm -hmm. Oh, it's all right. Yeah. I can't remember either. Um, <laughs> we definitely got it. Definitely got it. <laughs> Living proof right here. <laughs> um, so are we already, have we started already? Nate, because I see that we're recording already. We did, yeah, it's 7.02. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and read the, the thing to get us started then. Um, and just, and um, I had emailed with Greg earlier and said, since he's not feeling great, that he should absolutely feel free to keep his video off. And um, I'm envious that he is, because I <laughs> um, have to have mine off. So let me um, read our thing to get started. Um, all right, the time is now 7.02 and seen as a quorum of committee members is in attendance. This public hearing is being called to order. Welcome everybody to the February 2nd, 2022 public hearing of the Amherst Community Development Block Grant Advisory Committee. Pursuant to chapter 20 of the Acts of 2021 and extended by the state legislature on July 16th of 2022, this meeting is being conducted virtually using the Zoom platform. The meeting is being recorded and minutes are being taken as usual. Um, so we've already been chatting a little bit, um, but I guess I'll officially do a roll call to make sure everybody's working here and is present. Um, Lucas, can you, I see you, can you speak? Yes, hi, Great. Lucas Hanscom here. All right, Rika? Here, present. Great, Suzanne? Present. Nat? 
Virtually present. <laughs> and Greg? Present. Great. Okay. Um, so the primary purpose of this meeting tonight is to receive feedback from the community on the decisions that we made at our last meeting. Um, and I just want to note for those in attendance um, that even though Lucas and Rika weren't present at our last meeting, we All did right. have their rankings and we used those um, and they really did help to inform the, the decisions that we ended up making in the end. Um, I know that um, Nate made the decisions that we had made public, so the community should have had an opportunity to review them, but we'll also screen share them tonight so people can take a look at them. Um, and so, as I said, our, our primary purpose tonight, because this is a public hearing, is to hear from um, the um, from the public and what you'd like to say. We will limit people to three minutes um, per organization if you want to speak. Um, and um, let, why don't we get started? I, and also, actually, for those of you who weren't here last time, I'll just say again that we are able now when people speak um, and you're able to come in and we can actually see you on camera, which is great for us so we can really just have a, a better back and forth. So if you're comfortable turning your, your camera on when you come in, please do. And if you're not, that's fine as well. Um, but I think we'll go, um, you can raise your hand if you'd like to speak and um, we can go ahead and get started. Um, and I'll just- Sure, I was gonna just jump in quickly. Hi everyone, yeah. I'm Nate Malloy. I'm a planner with the town. Thanks Nate. I help staff the CDBG committee. So this is a required public hearing to as Becky said, have the public um, comment on the recommendations. I'll share my screen in a minute. The, um, the recommendations the committee made earlier this or earlier last month were shared with the town manager's office and they supported them. So there, there were no changes from what was recommended by the committee. Um, the block grant application just for process is due at the, um, on March 3rd or earlier, March 3rd is the latest. They're encouraging earlier applications, but that's doubtful. Um, so we do have, uh, you know, we can submit them earlier, but I have a feeling I won't get, I won't be done until, <laughs> until March 3rd. So, um, you know, this is, um, could be the last chance for comments and, um, yeah, and that's, I guess we can have hands raised. I know one member said they might need to leave early. Uh, Lori, I see you're here. I don't know if you want to raise your hand. Just usually we wouldn't jump. I see one hands raised, but I just want to make sure that we did get notice that someone may have to leave early. So. All right, well, I'm going to promote you to panelists, and then you can you can speak. That's how you want to do it, Becky. Is that usually what we'd have them? Yeah. Yes, that is. Thank you for welcoming me. I really appreciate it because I did have another commitment. I sent a statement which Nate suggested um, might be helpful. I don't know if anyone has seen it, but I just wanted to acknowledge you for the really thoughtful process because I feel like you honored the mission and the intention of this funding, which is to fund programs along a spectrum honoring the town's um, you know, statement of priorities. And I feel like you did that. And I recognize that these choices are very difficult. And I recognize that you're looking at how many constituents will benefit. And I just want to reassure you that even a modest investment in our program leverages so much additional progress. So um, we are grateful for being considered. We hope that that decision stands. Um, and we promise you that if it does, you will see amazing impact from your investment. Thank you. Does anybody have any questions? All right, we'll let you get to your next commitment. Thank you. Thank you so much, Lori. All right, so uh, Judith, your hand's raised. I'll promote you to panelist, and then you can speak. Hi, I'm Judith Roberts. I'm the director of the Literacy Project, and I know that the Literacy Project was not recommended for funding this year, but I wanted to join the meeting, I'm funding for next year, sorry. I wanted to join the meeting and say thank you for your good work. And thank you for the funding we received this year in Amherst. We've, we've had a great year and we've been, um, we've been able to um, 
and lots of students. We have a waiting list now for our classes in Amherst. And um, so it, it's been a great year for us and um, also add programming. We, we have a memoir writing project. So a humanities class added on to our GED. So uh, once again, I wanted to thank you. And also um, I know it's, you have to make hard choices and we work collaboratively with Center for New Americans and have immense respect for their work. And um, so that's all. And we'll be back to reapply in a couple, I think it's two year period, correct? Okay. So um, I appreciate the work of the committee. Thank you. Thank you. Thank and you. That's so gracious and, and nice to hear. Thank you. And actually, I will just take this opportunity to say that um, I was asking Nate earlier about what are the kinds of things that we can do kind of between grant cycles, if, if anything. And he was saying that um, in addition to having current grantees come and report on what's going on, we can also do site visits at different times if it, if it works in different places. So um, I think that's something that quite a few of us would be interested in doing. And so hopefully we'll get to come in and maybe observe or, or just kind of see what you're doing firsthand. And Judith, just quickly, you said that uh, um, someone from the program might be attending. So I don't know if if you know if they're here. She she couldn't make it. Her child was sick. So sorry about that. Thank you, Nate. Sure. Yep. Understand that. All right, Judith, we're gonna make you back to an attendee, and then have someone else um, speak. It's... All right, uh, Susan, you're um, will be promoted a panelist. Hi, everyone. Hi, I'm Susan Nicastro from Big Brothers Big Sisters of Hampshire County. And um, yeah, I just wanted to thank the committee with all my heart for recommending us for an award for the continued support of this funding. This funding makes such a critical difference with the work that we can do to bring mentoring to bigs and littles um, in the Amherst community. Um, and yeah, this funding is just, you know, just incredibly instrumental in the work that we do. Um, and we see it, you know, more and more of a need for mentoring in Amherst, and we're just very proud to be the primary mentoring provider. And yes, I just really wanted to recognize the great work of the committee for reviewing our application, for selecting us for funding, and yeah, we're incredibly grateful. So just on behalf of our staff, our constituents, and our advisory board, just wanted to send all our thanks and appreciation for all the wonderful work that you're doing and you know just making such a difference for what we're able to do with our um, continued work with mentoring so so thank you all so much thank you thank, and thank you for all of your work <laughs> hmm. thanks it's really appreciated being part of the last meeting especially to seeing how much thoughtfulness and care that the committee is putting into um, the responsibility of implementing this funding and, you know, the tough decisions that you all have to make. So just really re recognize all of the incredible efforts that you all are doing to, um, to make this happen for our community. So thank you again. Thank you. Thanks, Thanks. for letting us know. Oh, absolutely. All right, Lev, you can join as a panelist in a minute or a second. <laughs> Sorry, I think two and a half years into <laughs> Zoom, we'd all have the unmuting down pat. Thank you so much for having me. Um, similarly, I'd like to extend my appreciation to the committee for your thoughtful deliberation. Um, I wasn't able to make it to the meeting a few weeks ago, but I was really glad to be able to watch the recording and get a sense of the review and the considerations and just the, the rating process and criteria that the committee was using. So um, thank you so much for that thoughtful deliberation. I wanted to use my time today to share a bit of an update on the current status of the food pantry at the Emmer Survival Center and what we're seeing in terms of rising need because um, things have shifted, frankly, even from the time of the application. And um, 
I will be blunt. Uh, the increase in need that we're seeing over the last several months is staggering. We have rock solid volunteers. We have an incredible staff team and we have an organizational infrastructure that is light years more efficient than it was a few years ago. And yet we're really, really stretched. Um, I was very grateful to learn that the initial recommendation from this committee kept our funding roughly level. And I uh, very well recognize that there are highly limited funds and an amazing plethora of incredibly important work that our food pantry participants also access in all those different ways. So I recognize that an increase beyond this current level is unlikely. Um, that would be wonderful, but I really respectfully want to advocate to please not reduce below the current level. Um, I think food security in our community is both deeply personal for each individual and family who is impacted, the trauma, the fear, the physical and mental health impacts, and it is also really a problem of scale, one that can kind of only really be understood in the context of the numbers. And um, I'll acknowledge, I think I sometimes struggle to share that personal story because it feels like there's so much similarity and also so much uniqueness in each of those stories. And it's not mine to tell and those pieces, but um, I, I helped a pantry shopper go through who just went through the pantry the other day. And as they were pushing out the cart, they kind of mumbled, if it wasn't for this, my family would not survive. And it was what really struck me, I hear things like that all the time, frankly, um, but what really struck me was the degree of matter of factness with which they said it. They were pushing their cart out the door. It wasn't a profuse statement of gratitude. It was their reality. For other people, accessing groceries at the food pantry means that they're up to date on their electric bill or that their house is warm because they can pay for their heat. Um, or that they know that their kids are getting a nutritious breakfast before they head off to school and so they can concentrate in class and they have food to welcome them when they come home. I know that my time is almost up, um, but I want to briefly just give a, cap, a sort of a setup on the numbers because the, the food pantry utilization among Amherst residents is really through the roof. Every one of our last six months has met or exceeded our highest pandemic surges. Um, so we're seven months into our current CDBG contract, and we have served 1,968 Amherst residents in the food pantry. That's 98% of our goal for the 12-month year, and it's 33% more than we served in a, the same time frame um, in the previous contract year. Month over month, we're seeing more than 20% more than we were seeing last year, which was, and that's 32% more than two years before that. So I just want to really, I want to let the committee know what an important investment this is at this time with the rising need that we're seeing within the Amherst community. The current CDBG funding recommendation breaks down to $25 total per Amherst resident served for an entire year of food pantry access um, and less than 10 cents per meal worth of groceries that will be provided to each Amherst resident. So it feels like it's a- Can you say that again, Lib? Yeah, the current CDBG funding recommendation breaks down to $25 total per Amherst resident served over the course of a year. Um, so $25 for an individual to be able to access up to two weeks of groceries every month for 12 months um, for $25. That comes out to less than 10 cents per meal for the groceries that are provided to Amherst residents. Um, so I, I just recognize that I think sometimes in discussing of this, the this I wonder sometimes like can our folks grasping the scale um, at which the pantry is being used, especially currently with um, the need that we're seeing, um, we're really looking at that uh, a community level investment um, in helping our community to be more food secure and helping each and every family and individual knowing that they have some place to turn. Um, so it feels like we're we're at a precipice of actually really needing to do a lot more to be able to meet that need to expand access. Um, we're considering options to be able to serve more people than we currently have the capacity to, frankly. Um, and so I want to uh, respectfully request that the committee um, maintain their current recommendations, certainly through this process, uh, because we're we're at a bit of a tipping point, I think. Thank you for sharing that.
Did you have a question, Nat? Yes, I'm. Uh, thank you for the update, Lev. It's it's actually kind of astounding that you're seeing that increase, and I'm glad you're able to meet that need as well as you are. But you know, what do you um, see as the reason for that increase? Are other government programs expiring, running out, or is it like new people moving in with these needs, or what? what yeah. What do you see? Um, I think that the number one, sorry for that light glare in the background. Um, I think that the number one issue is the rising cost of food at the grocery store and of all other expenses to meet basic needs. And so especially for households who are living on very low incomes that are already very stretched when all of your income is going towards those essentials. And those are the things where we've seen the most significant price hikes and there's nothing discretionary to cut out. Um, people end up in really significant hardship. So we're both seeing um, a rise in current regular pantry shoppers coming back for more. We started in October offering the second monthly fresh boost shop, which gives people a whole nother shop of produce and eggs and milk and cheese. Um, we're seeing good utilization of that. We're also seeing a real increase, I don't have the numbers in front of me, of people coming back for what we call emergency shops, which you can come back as often as you need to for just additional canned goods and stapled, uh, staples and shelf-stable milk. Um, so I think those costs are most significant, but I appreciate you asking the another very significant factor is that um, in March uh, is when pandemic snap will end. And um, we are, it would take me a minute to find that number. I meant to have it ready and I don't, but um, I know that um, it's a, it, impacting a very significant number of uh, Amherst residents. And um, we're hearing that people are coming and already speaking about that they don't know what they're gonna do in a couple months. So that's part of our, planning is uh, trying to figure out that we're already seeing these increase in need and then are anticipating a further rise uh, within the next couple of months. Um, and I'm happy, I just closed the thing that had that number, but I'm happy to either share it in about 30 seconds or I can uh, email the committee to follow up because I do think that snap changes is a really important one. Well, maybe when um, when we do do our our um, meeting later in the spring with updates on how things are going now. Um, you know, we'll get an update then, and actually that will probably be into the time when when the benefits have ended. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Did that? Yeah. I don't know. Is that an answer to your question? Now? Yeah. That's that's yeah. Very helpful. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks. Yeah. Thank you so much. Yeah. Thank, thank you. you. Yeah, I muted myself too. So I, <laughs> I said, Lev, I'll make you an attendee again and while well, someone else speak, thanks. Uh, Lauren, you can um, come on over as a uh, panelist. There we are. Oh, I thank you. I'm trying to turn my camera on. But yes, hi. I'm Lauren. I'm speaking as a resident, and I just had a brief um, comment prepared. And I'm going to turn my camera off because um, sometimes it's better to hear me. Okay. Can you still hear me? Yes. yes. Um, as an individual and resident of Amherst for the past six years. You I, know what, Lauren, you're coming in and out a little bit. Okay. I'll try to speak. There, that's better. Whatever you just did, that's better. Um, I, I am making this comment in behalf of um, myself as a resident of Amherst for six years. I would like uh, to request uh, the town to use community development block grant funding to develop a process to bring about a cultural youth economic development empowerment center based on a feasibility study 
that has gathered data and work of new of the new press department, CSSJ committee, and continued requests and recommendations of the former CSWG that is in the town's development strategy document, which states it was an integral um, part in, in bringing about CREST. Also public health departments um, have conducted community assessments as well as um, other community groups and projects um, that can provide insight to the needs of low and moderate income residents. From a resident um, virtual, a uh, recent, sorry, a recent virtual forum of BU School of Public Health entitled Insecure Housing, Homelessness and Health. Focus groups from these experiencing, focus groups from those experiencing homelessness wanted to see the following improvements. One, adequate housing options, dignity-based services, and the end to practices that criminalize homelessness. Taking pride in being the place where three major colleges reside, Amherst should be taking into account the educational and equity improvements needed of its diverse students in elementary, middle, and high school so that they are college ready when graduating and entering adulthood. Amherst needs to support youth clearly with an actual center to provide peer-to-peer -peer services, community projects, business and cultural initiatives to ensure that growing trends of homelessness among young adults is not increasing, but a downward trend. And um, thank you very much for accepting my comments. Thank you, Lauren. Um, thank you for those comments. Um, so j I'll just explain and then Nate, just please jump in if I'm just to, to clarify. The, um, what we're able to do is give money to um, grants that people who apply to us, so the organizations that apply or for town projects that apply. Um, and, you know, I think we would all love to see an application that that included the um, the youth center. I think one of the um, and would obviously look at it as carefully as, as it any as it any of the other um, grants or uh, requests that come our way. One of the I think hurdles for the um, for this committee this particular committee to fund that program is that there has to it has to um, primarily um, serve low and moderate moderate income families and it, that's part of the what the um, federal government requires for it and so it would mean that anybody going to the center would have to I think fill out some sort of an income we'd have to track essentially who was using the the program um, to prove that it was being used for low and moderate income families primarily. And I don't think that's what the youth center is for in its mission is my understanding. Um, and not necessarily information that anybody wants to be collecting from people as they're coming in, which doesn't mean that it can't happen. But I think that's one of the, my understanding is that that's one of the reasons that this this particular committee hasn't been looked at as a, a place for um, money to support that particular initiative. Um, but I agree with you that we should have one. <laughs> um, and and if if there's some way that that CDBG monies could be used to support a program like that or programs that are happening within it once it's built, we would absolutely welcome seeing, you know, proposals coming this way and reviewing them. I really appreciate you coming. Thank you. I hope everybody feels better. Thank you. <laughs> Take care, stay warm. <laughs> All right, we have a few more hands raised or actually just one right now. Tim, you're uh, being promoted to panelist. Hey everyone, um, my name is Tim. Um, I'm the executive director of Craig Stores. 
Um, Lauren, if you're still on the call, please don't hesitate to to shoot me an email at tim at craigsdoors.org. I know quite a bit of what you were discussing was support um, for families who might be facing homelessness, and uh, we have a ton of resources and um, lots of ambition uh, at potentially assisting in that space. So um, I wanted to jump on and thank this committee with all of the gratitude in my being. Um, if I appear a little bit exhausted, um, if you guys aren't hip, we're gonna get a, a pretty severe cold snap, um, life-threatening cold snap. So for the last 20 or so hours, I've been doing out, we have been performing outreach to the encampments and to any individuals sleeping rough and working in conjunction with Cress and with the APD and AFD um, to get folks into our building. We were uh, provided a, a 15 bed expansion in capacity, which is amazing. Thank you to Town Hall. Um, and we've also put up about 25 people into emergency hotel stays through Sunday. Um, so lots of lives um, improved, I, I would dare to say saved. So um, that's super exciting. I know that Cress had come up earlier as well. We're really working in conjunction with them and sort of serving as their homeless arm and really providing more robust case management. Um, and so many of these focuses our dedication to, to dignity focused service delivery and our humanistic lens. Um, we are undergoing a rapid training curriculum that includes trauma informed care, harm reduction measures, de escalation processes. Um, we are working with the Center for Human Development to collect data among all of our uh, hotel stays so that we can lobby and advocate the state for more funding for inclement weather next year. Um, and hopefully as of next week, we will be um, distributing uh, bus passes to all of our guests for the next six months. They'll have unlimited capacity to drive the PV, to ride the PVTA um, for whatever they may need. And again, all of these initiatives are informed and made possible by the support of the town. Um, by this committee in particular and in, in having your support this year for the first time under our new administration um, is just, I don't really have words. It's, it's incredible. It, it means so, so much to the young group of folks that I work with who are so passionate and so dedicated and, and just dying to get fully stabilized and to continue innovating. Um, and it's just a real honor to be in Amherst and, and to be a, a benefactor um, of all of your hard work. So um, I guess I just wanted to say thank you so much. Thank you. And thank you for your hard work. <laughs> Thanks, Tim. It's really cool that your guests get to drive the buses too, huh? No. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like our decision making pales in comparison to the hard work that that you do and that everybody that works in these organizations does. So um, you're welcome and thank you for it. Yeah, you guys are amazing civil leaders. One last plug on Sunday, uh, the 5th in Springfield is the first ever winter walk to end homelessness, the first ever Western Massachusetts winter walk to end homelessness. Um, it is at nine o'clock. And uh, on the other side of the state, this has been an institution for several years, and it ends up bringing in hundreds of thousands of dollars in support for organizations like ours. So this is the inaugural year. We're not expecting that sort of turnout. Um, but if you want to come get a free Craig's Doors winter hat, big, this is our first merch drop ever. Come and, uh, and show up and, and have some fun with us. And uh, again, thank you all so much. Thank you, Tim. Have a good night. Thanks, Tim. So I don't see anybody else's hands raised. If anybody else does want to um, come on in, feel free to raise your hand. Um, oh, Francine now has her hand raised. All right. Yeah, so quickly while um, Francine is joining, yeah, what Tim was mentioning, the Western Mass Network to End Homelessness, it's, um, the website is westernmasshousingfirst.org. They have, um, I'm assuming they have information on it, um, 
I did get an email from them, but um, if anyone's interested, that it might it might be there. Hi, Francine. Hi. How are you? Good. Um, thank you for having me. Um, I just quickly, I, I wasn't at the last meeting, but um, first of all, sorry, my name is Francine Rodriguez. I work at CHD's Family Outreach of Amherst, and the committee has um, prioritized us for our housing program. And I wish I was at the last meeting because Laura attended and she was, she just was really excited. And I, I that was the one time I didn't go and I wish I was there. Apparently but, they're um, recorded. So you can, <laughs> so I can, you, can you can enjoy the experience anytime <laughs> from the couch. I know, I know in, in my case, I go back and watch these over and over again. <laughs> Work on your end. Right. How do I look? <laughs> um, so um, initially, I just want to thank the committee for, for prioritizing how housing in Amherst and understanding that that it is a critical need um, in Amherst, along with all of the other agencies. Um, that are doing wonderful, absolutely wonderful work. And we collaborate with all of them um, to keep our residents happy, healthy, housed, and fed. Um, and I know our program has taken like a shift where usually just residents were approaching us. And because we're doing great work, landlords are now calling directly. They're calling me directly saying, can you help my tenant? Can you help this tenant? Um, which I think is amazing because landlords are seeing that you know, they, a lot of these are big corporations. They don't have control over the rental increases. And one landlord recently reached out because her tenants, the rental increases, the company she works for, and the tenants that have Section 8 vouchers, they're not approving the increase. And then they said to her, when she's trying to advocate, they just said, well, they have to move. They have to find somewhere else to move that falls into the payment standard. And that means finding somewhere definitely out of Amherst, of course. And most of these folks have lived in Amherst their whole life and their kids attend the schools and they don't want, you know, it's heartbreaking to have to think I have to move to Springfield or to Holyoke, nothing against Springfield or Holyoke, but you know, you're changing your whole environment. And it's, and, you know, Amherst is a really strong welcoming community. And it's sad that, you know, the rental hikes are just moving, forcing people to move because people don't want to move. but. Um, I'm just grateful that you understand the need, the housing need and the crisis that we're facing. And, you know, the rental increase, I mean, it's just ridiculous, but it's out of all of our control, unfortunately. Um, but I do appreciate that the town of Amherst does see it, it does understand it, and is trying to like build more affordable housing and is really upfront on keeping families in Amherst. You know, you're not ignoring it, you know that's an issue and you're doing the best you can to to keep it a priority for the town of Amherst and to keep families here. So I appreciate that you guys recognize that and support the work that we're doing. So I just wanna say thank you for prioritizing housing in Amherst. Thank you, Francine. Thank you. Perfect timing. <laughs> <laughs> Does anybody have any questions? Oh, sorry, what? sorry, Becky. I just wanted to make sure nobody has any questions or anything for Francine. Thank you, and thank you for your work. Thank you. Good night. Bye. Bye. And it looks like Tim had his hand up again. All right, Tim, we'll, we'll, we'll let you back in. Hey, I'm sorry, guys. Super quick update. Um, uh, Nate, the link you were looking for is winterwalk.org. Oh, great. That's all I got. I just wanted to make sure everybody had it. Thanks so much. Thank you. Um, so I think um, with no other hands raised, we can just start our discussion. And if people want to um, chime in, they can raise their hands again. Um, but essentially, I think um, this is our opportunity to decide if we have any reason to change our original decisions or if we're good with sticking with what we've got. Um, and I would say we should stick with what we've got. I think we put a ton of thought into it, um, hours and hours and and listened and and read and um, made really tough decisions. And so I would recommend that we stick with that and um, happy to hear from other people if you agree or- So just to um, go back to what um, you or Nate said earlier. So you did meet uh, with the town manager and, and or is that not yet? 
No, I, no, I, I did. So we, oh. I, I um, sent the recommendations to the town manager's office. I met with Dave um, and communicated with Paul. And so they, they supported the recommendations. Okay, good. Yeah. I think, you know, moving forward, there's always discussions about, you know, would Amherst fund five social services? Um, you know, there isn't, it's not a requirement. It's something that's become practice. And, you know, I know the committee is always often asked, you know, do we weight certain criteria differently? And I think, you know, that's always a possibility, you know, for the next um, funding cycle. So, you know, I think, you know, Becky and I were saying that we have a little bit of time and maybe we give, you know, the committee, um, we will need to meet next month to hold a public hearing to review current activities, but then we could take a break for a few months um, and then, you know, start planning for the next cycle um, with enough, you know, time to have good public outreach. And, you know, if there were things needed to change in terms of how we develop the request for proposals, we give ourselves that opportunity. And I feel like sometimes you're always rushing, right? We get through an application process, we'd have a few months, and then we'd almost have to start all over again for the next cycle. And so it's nice to have um, although it's not great for everyone, that it's a two-year grant and there's a little bit of a lag. It gives us a little bit of time to, to you know, maybe you know, have some ideas about how to structure things differently. So yes, I, you know, that's a long answer to say yes. I, I met with them. <laughs> well, I would suggest that we stay with um, the recommendations as submitted. I think it was a good process, and even though I wasn't there for the meeting, I you know, reviewed the applications and I'm really pleased where we ended up. So I hope we can stay there. So I think then um, our next order, you know what, I don't have the agenda in front of me. Um, Nate, do we have other orders of business or is it, can we just set a date maybe for the next public hearing? Yeah, I mean, you know, we had the, um, you know, if there are any comments or any reasons to talk about target areas or the strategy we could, it doesn't seem like there, there's, that's necessary. Um, I don't really have any announcements um, other than, you know, the grants due and uh, by March 3rd, the town's application to the state. So, um, yeah, I don't have anything else. I mean, we could try to set another meeting. Um, so just, you know, for everyone, we have to have a public hearing to review current activities. And so this would be to review the 21 activities. Um, I'm not sure that Ben had one uh, in the fall, but you know it's easy enough to schedule one in mid to late March. Um, I don't remember having one mm -hmm. um, in the fall. It may, yeah, there may not have been. Um, but why don't we schedule that? And would it be at that time that we would talk about possibly doing a site site visits, or the organizations could include in their um, in their updates, whether that's something that would be feasible, mm -hmm. if anybody's interested in doing that. Mm -hmm. yeah, that could work. Okay. We could do this. We could have the hearing in early April as well. Quarterly reports are due in April. Um, I'm not sure it is. Let's do it in whatever way is the easiest for the organizations. I mean, if they're writing their quarterly reports, why don't we do it right after those are due maybe so that they can just, does that make sense? Rather than having to pull together information twice. Right, and they could report on what they've submitted. So that would, you know, that would push us to mid-April then. Okay. I mean, the week of April 17th, I don't, you know, I don't really have any. <laughs> Is that, um that works for me. I don't know whether there's school vacation week since I don't have kids in school anymore. I mean. I yeah, it's a uh, school vacation week. So, depends. Oh, Should we try for the, like the 13th? Does that work for people? Yeah, when April 13th looks good. When are the quarterly reports due, Nate? Is it after, before then? Yeah, Let's find, I mean, the, the reports are due by the 10th from organizations and then we submit them to the state by the 15th. So, you know, the information would already be okay. developed by the organizations and the grantees, so. So why don't we, is 13th good for everyone? Yes. Okay. Yes. So seven to not or seven again, right? Seven, yes. yep. And yeah, we're going to continue to meet via Zoom. Well, good question. Um, 
I'll know more at some point. <laughs> I bet you will. <laughs> <laughs> That's a, by, no doubt. Yeah, no I know I'll know that it happened actually the other year where we had a week and a half where there was the lapse in That's right, uh, executive order and whatever. And so I had a, we had a schedule. I think it was a, I don't know if, I think it was actually a block grant meeting. We scheduled it both yes, as in person and meeting. over Zoom. It was and then we were all in a panic. Yeah. And so, you know, if getting closer to the April date, it seems like there isn't a clear answer. I mean, I would rather just push the, the hearing back or something um, rather than guess, you know, if we have to do a public notice you know, typically, you know, 10 days to two weeks beforehand. And if it's really not clear, what's the right way to schedule it? I, you know, we can just email and figure out another date just because I don't, I would hate to say, let's do it over zoom. And then it changes and we can, and it has to be in person and we haven't noticed it correctly or something. So. Um, okay. Well, we'll just assume zoom unless you tell us otherwise. Yes. And yeah. I'm, I'm keeping my fingers crossed a little bit, just it's yeah. convenient. We've got this down. I know, and it seems so convenient for everybody who wants to attend also to just be able to kind of do their thing. And right. Well, in the, I mean, and ironically, it, you know, ironically, but the, um, I'm always amazed to see when I, I look online sometimes to see how many views the committee meetings get after they've been posted uh, to the town's website. And it's pretty amazing that after, you know, sometimes a few weeks, it might have like 20 or 30 views. Uh, some, you know, some are that, more. That, but... that might be just me. <laughs> 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 right. <laughs> well, it's a, it's a nice opportunity, though, to be able to watch what's happened as opposed to, you know, maybe read minutes that come out yep. quite a bit after the fact. Yeah. All right. Great. Anything else? No, I'd like to thank the committee, too. I think, you know, it's it is a lot on, you know, volunteer members to review and prioritize proposals. They're pretty in-depth and we ask a lot. So I thank you for going through that. I know some of you, this is also your you know, your first go around. And so I think it was a really nice process. And, um, you know, I, I hopefully you feel the same way. And if there are any questions from committee members, you can always email me um, or Becky and we can try to help uh, for next time. Yeah, and I think one of the things that we'll think about going forward is, you know, whether we want to do a survey again, whether we want to do it differently or publicize it differently and sort of think about, you know, getting that out there more. Um, and we can, you know, we have some time to, to talk that through. Um, and also, I think we do need more committee members. So if anybody knows anybody who would be a great asset, um, I think we will. Yeah, it's it's okay to recruit or talk to your talk to someone about it. But they still have to go through the interview process. So. They do, right. <laughs> yeah. Great. Well, thanks, Sounds everybody. Good. Um, I guess I will call the meeting to close. All right. Thanks, All right. Thank you. I hope you all feel stay better. Warm, you, Becky, and Greg. Thank yes, you. stay warm. Yes, yeah, stay warm. Stay warm and get well. Right, yes. Bye-bye. Bye. 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 Bye.